Welcome everyone, my name is Vanessa Pizzuto. I am a journalist working with the Trans-European Division and this is Pastor Patrick Johnson. Hi. Hi, <laughs> nice to be with you, Vanessa. <laughs> nice to be, we are, we are almost every day in the office and here in Finland as well, spending yeah. time together. For those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I was born in Jamaica um, and then grew up in, uh, in England and uh, after studying a little bit, moved to Norway, because I married a Norwegian. Yes. She comes from the northernmost town in the world, which is called Hammerfest. And then we had three children there, lived there for 14 years, and now I'm back in England. Um, I'm working at the Trans-European Division as the Ministerial Association Secretary. Very well, so we know a little bit about you as you know, your professional and personal life. Tell us something we wouldn't suspect, something surprising or funny, a fun fact oh. about Patrick. Fun fact, uh, I can ski. Doesn't oh. look like it, does it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I learned to, to cross-country ski while I was living in Norway. Oh, wow, uh, that's a good so, skill. So that's, uh, that was, yeah. That, that's Something different. Mm. And recently, you have written a book, Love, Fights back. It's your first book. My first book. Yes. Congratulations. Indeed. That's Thank amazing. Yeah. So how how did you start? How did you come about? Um, well, I, I had uh, spoken with a group of youth one time about identity, and we ended up talking about the three angels' messages. Okay. And I asked them, "So, what are the three angels' messages about?" Yeah. And there was silence. Nobody could explain it. So I thought, I'm going to go and write three sermons about this. Um, but I'd have to do it in a different way because most people, you know, as soon as you say the three angels' messages, it's like, oh, thank you very much, please. Um, but but the, the, uh, because the experts, they, they, the way they explain it, it's so detailed, nobody knows anything about it. And I so it started out, out as three sermons. I would say that sometimes when it comes to the three angels message, I don't know about you, but myself, I grew up with a kind of scary yeah. uh, way to show this. Yeah. So if someone was to say to me, hey, share the gospel, I probably wouldn't start with the three angels, I'll be no, honest. No. So what is different about this book? Well, um, y you know, our mission statement as Adventists is to go and make disciples who tell the good news about the three angels' messages. Uh, and as you say, for most of us, it's a scary, it's scary stuff. So, so what I've done is I, I've tried to use what I think is Jesus' method. He often summarized things, and then he told stories. So for each of the messages, I've given a summary and told a story so that in the hands of anyone, um, they can just tell a story and then they've told the first angels, second angels, third angels messages. That's really what it's about. I love it. And I think I was reading about storytelling because it's one of my passions. And it seems that like our brains are wired for a story. So it reaches us in ways that other things cannot. I don't want you to spoil the book for me. I really, I really don't. But I was, I was looking at it earlier. And in like your first paragraph, you say, I am no longer afraid of God. Mm. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know many, about many other people, but uh, I grew up with a pretty scary picture of God. Uh, we have used fear as a motivating factor for a really long time. And I think we, we, we have a, a generation of uh, young people these days who, who they'll just vote with their feet and say, I don't want to have anything to do with that. So, yeah, th this represents my journey of coming to grips with a God who actually is not somebody to be afraid of at all, but somebody who just wants a close friendship with us. Wow, and, and I love this because there's often a process of unlearning some toxic, yeah. wrong, scary theology yeah. and learning good stuff. So yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And you told me earlier as well, there are some implications at the end of the book. Yes. If we believe this, what is going to happen? What are yeah. some of those implications? Yeah, so for example, with the first angel's message, um, uh, one of the implications of that is how do we then look at the investigative judgment, which if there's one thing that m makes most of us scared, 
it's the investigative judgment. So, so I revisit that in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I like and revisit, that, revisit a few other things too. I yes. like the idea of revisiting. I was reading another book about the judgment, and it was talking about how we are judging God's character mm. and how the judgment is a vindication of God's character. Mm. So I'm not going to spoil it. I'm mm -hmm. not going to spoil it, but I'm really looking forward to reading this. Um, and to, I think you're painting a beautiful picture of God, a loving picture of God, the real, the real God. So I, I really appreciate that. I also know, and since I have you here, I also know that you have a passion for making the church accessible to everyone. Yeah, yes. And so before I, I let you go, I would love to hear a bit about that because I know that's your calling as well. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, so my, my further studies have been uh, based on uh, disability and how the church reacts to people with disabilities. And um, I, yeah, uh, that's where my passion lies now as well, to, to make the church a place that is accessible to everyone and especially those with, with special needs, whatever those needs may be, and there are a whole plethora of, of different needs. Um, because I think that's the way Jesus was. He, he, he made the, the gospel accessible to everyone, and you saw the appeal he had. I think that could happen to our church too. Imagine yeah. if, if we were known for uh, mm. making the gospel accessible to anybody who came. Oh, I think we would have a great appeal to you. You know, Patrick, Years ago, when I worked at a radio, I had the chance to interview Kevin Chandler. He is a man with a disability. He's bound to a chair, but he wanted to explore Europe, and he wanted to explore places that he couldn't get to in a wheelchair. So he had a bunch of friends, amazing friends, who came up with a backpack. He's quite light, and they carried him in a backpack <laughs> so he could wow. see all the places in Europe. Mm. If we were to take this idea and apply it to the church, what would be that backpack wow. that makes church <laughs> accessible? Or what would be some of the things that we can do to, because he said to me, you know, Vanessa, accessibility is not about lifts, it's about people helping people. That's right. So how can we, how can we do that? Yeah, you know, I, I think we all need to, to uh, think about going on a kind of journey of, of uh, understanding and accepting people. Uh, we often start with ignorance, you know, we, we just don't know. Uh, and so we pity people, but, but then we need to move past that and get some more knowledge about different uh, uh, disabilities, for example. Uh, and that helps us go on a journey where we end up um, with friends that have disabilities um, and uh, making our churches completely accessible and understanding that people with disabilities, they offer a lot to the church too. Um, and the reason why this is so, such a passion for me is my son has a disability. He is uh, wheelchair dependent and uh, uh, we've learned so much uh, through him as well uh, as, as just having him as, as our child. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, in the Bible, God says he dwells in the highest heavens, but also with those who are in the most humble places as well. So if you want to find God, go to the humble places, mm. uh, the people who are if you like, in our eyes, most humble, and you will find God there. And, and uh, imagine if our churches were known for that. It would be something, something wow. spectacular. What an amazing testimony, right? Absolutely. But we, I, would, I love that, what we can learn from them. This is a journey about learning from people from disabilities, things that we ought to, to learn. Patrick, where can we find your book? Well, if you go to lifesourcebookshop.co.uk, you can uh, find the book there. Um, and hopefully you will enjoy the read. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you.